Hi, I'm Ali and welcome to the China Repair Studio. So today I thought I would show you the basic colour theory on ceramics and also which obviously you can use on china and porcelain and pottery. Now before I do so, if you haven't subscribed before, please subscribe, please like and also please share. Right, now the things I want to show you today is the real basics of colour theory but also some paints I would recommend if you're just starting out the colours and also the different types of paint you can use when airbrushing and also by painting. And, that one, and in the end, I just want to show you one little thing I've done, which I think is a very useful thing to do when you are painting and wanting to know your colours. Right, now, first things first, I just want here, I have my three primary colours. Now, when it comes to painting on ceramics and porcelain and pottery, I tend to use powder pigments and also acrylic. Now, the powder pigments I tend to buy, and they, they're quite expensive, they're about, I don't know, £10 a pot, £12 a pot, and that was years ago, but they do last an awful long time. A little bit goes a long way. Now, I do buy, I've bought these from Green and Stone in London. Um, I'm not sure if you're in other countries, if you can buy them on Amazon, or you may be able to get something very similar from your local art shop. Now, other things I use as well as powder pigments are acrylics. And the ones I buy are from Windsor and Newton, and they're the professional acrylics. Always go for the professional range because the pigment in there is a lot better and you really can tell the difference, to be honest. And with this, I stum when I stumbled on this, it, on the acrylics, it was because I couldn't get the right colour for a piece of china I was doing for a client, so Chinese vase, and it was very it had a very turquoise base. So I managed to get some cerulean blue in the Windsor & Newton, mixed it with some other tones, uh, hues, and managed to get the perfect colour. And what I realised is by using the um, acrylic, is when it goes through the airbrush so well, because there's no little nodules and bits and pieces, it glows through like a dream. You don't have anything clogging up. It mixes well with water and it also mixes well with the ceramic glaze. Whereas if you're using a powder pigment, you have to make sure it is really well mixed because if it tends to have little nodules and little grainy bits. And if they're in the grainy bits, if you're painting it with a brush, you get bits on the china. And also if you are using an airbrush, it can block the airbrush very easily and can be quite frustrating because then you have to take it all apart and wash it and get the colour going again. So I do tend, particularly if I'm airbrushing, I use this. You can mix them together, sometimes use acrylics and if I haven't got the colour I'd mix it with, a, you know, say um, a yellow or something, a powder pigment. Right, so there are the types of paint I use. Now, just a very brief colour theory, quickly. Um, so obviously we have our primary colours, which are yellow, red and blue. Now, the colours I tend to use, um, this is um, Ultramarine Deep, which is the blue, Alzerian re Lake Red, Red Lake, the red, and primary yellow for the yellow. Now, if you want a secondary colour, you would then um, mix the red with the yellow which would make orange and then or obviously then the yellow with the blue in between you'd have green and then the blue with the red you'd have purple so they are then the secondary colours and then you have things like with the hue which is the colour of the actual colour if you like the the hue is the colour, um, but then you have things like the value. Now the value is light to dark if you like and there are other things you can say such as the shade which is the colour the hue which you use with black so for instance if I had some yellow and put a tiny bit of black in it and then a bit more and a bit more that's the shade now with the tint a tint is when you're mixing it with white so I would have where are we some white titanium white if I mixed it with the blue bit by bit that is the tint. And then the tone is when you're using a grey, 
with a colour, with a hue. So for instance, a grey with the blue and bit by bit, you add in a bit more grey, you end up, you know, you'd end up with more of a tone. Now they do kind of come into sort of two ways of temperatures, hot and cold. Now obviously the, the hot colours would be the red, the oranges, and the, and the yellows, and the cold colours would be the blues and the greens. And then you have monochrome and then going down into, which would be um, black, and then that's, you know, you mix it with white and it would just, you know, disperse into a tone depending on how much you put in of the white. So that's the real basics of colour theory. Um, now I just want to show you a few other things, little hints and tips before I start tomorrow. As I say, tomorrow I do want to be um, using these um, and I want to do some airbrushing on them and um, also painting so I can show you. But when you are mixing your colours and your acrylics, when you want a certain colour, actually put it on a piece which isn't damaged and then let it dry and make sure it's the same colour. You'll see if it blends in and then you'll know you're good to go. And that's a really good indicator of perfect colour. Now, the colours I would recommend if you're just starting out, because there's a huge range and you could spend a fortune, is just to get the basic colours, which are the primary colours. Now, I would, as I said before, I would go for the ultramarine, primary yellow, and Osirian red lake. And then a definite must is a black. Um, and I have here an ivory black. And a white, definitely another must, titanium white. And then if you want to, you could add a grey in there as well. Not necessary because you can make grey with white and black, but there's Payne's grey. And then you have the earthy, tony colours, which I, I recommend. Raw umber is a brilliant one. And also sable is a great one. They're sort of browny, tony, earthy colours, which can actually sort of help knock back some of the colour if you add a bit too. So it's all trial and error. Now, one thing I would highly recommend, which I did, is I actually did a colour chart. Now, this one here, did this a long time ago, is just the basic colours. Um, when I've used them once and then when I've used them twice, um, I did use that at one stage when I did botanical illustration. Um, so I did a colour chart here. But what I have done as well, um, I need to find it to hand actually, is I've make, mixed another colour, made another colour chart, but as well as doing the basic colours, I've mixed colours together. So for instance, I've got my blue and I've got my yellow, and then I've mixed the blue and yellow together to show the different tones. So then I can have a quick access, uh, have a quick look in my book, and then that gives me a good idea of the colours I need to use. So I'd highly recommend if you could do a paint chart, they're very useful. And once you've got it, you've got it forever. And also you can do it in tones. So again, by adding the white or adding the grey and adding the black. So it's a really good idea to do that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful for you. As I say, I am going to be uploading next on my Staffordshire dogs. We're going to be airbrushing and painting, finishing them off. Um, again, if you haven't subscribed before, Please subscribe and please like and also please share and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.